Hey guys, so what I want to talk today about is, well, I get a lot of questions about what diet should I start on, what should I be doing right out the gate, etc, etc, etc. And what I'm always wanting to do is that I need to collect some data. We need to understand where you're at right here, right now, at this point in time, before we start making any modifications and changes. Because yeah, we can put you on a diet, we can do X, Y, and Z, but in reality, you're gonna, you know, if we make those modifications and they don't fit into your lifestyle or it's too drastic, you're not gonna be able to sustain it. So. I like to do food tracking, particularly using a food journal. Now, I like to use the analogy that if at the end of every month you were all of a sudden running out of money, well, what would you do? You create a budget and you figure out where that money that you're is going, what are you spending your money on, and how can you better save and maintain your money? Now, people will often compliment and applaud you for doing that and say, "Great job! That's that's something really to do. It's good. You're tracking your expenses." And I'm always a big believer that well, the same thing can be done with our food. Now, yes, tracking your food, tracking calories, protein, etc., etc., isn't for everybody. Yes, in some people it can become obsessive and it can lead to things like eating disorders and obsessive behaviors and that such a thing. Yes, that definitely can happen. So, for everybody, it's not going to work for everybody. There's not one single way that's going to work for every single person on this planet. We've been over this a million freaking times. But if you are looking to kind of collect some data to understand where are the gaps, you know, you're trying to manage your weight, you're trying to live a healthier lifestyle, whatever it is. To look for those gaps to understand where they're at, tracking your food can be a great way to do that. Now you don't need to do it for the rest of your life. Again, some people do that for the rest of their life, but you might do two weeks at a time, collect as much data as possible, make some modifications, go a couple of weeks, stall out. Okay, make some more modifications, or track again, make some more modifications, etc., etc., etc. Some that's it's varies, and it, it really kind of depends person to person on how much tracking, how intensive we do. Now, the more detailed you can be with like scales, measuring cups, and that sort of thing, the better off we're going to be because really humans is guesstimating stuff like that. Just like as humans as historians, we're very poor at it. We're not really good. Our eyes really are bigger than our stomach, so you'll often overestimate and not get the proper estimations when you're coming to looking at your food diary and that sort of thing. Okay, so the food diary can be very beneficial. Collects as much data as possible. And we have a food diary on the Healthcare Evolution website, healthcareevolve.ca. Beautiful little diary. Um, what it allows you to do is kind of track your your calories and your protein. Really, the two things that I'm really concerned about. But it also asks you, what are your feelings before and after meal? Were you starving beforehand? Were you not really hungry? Um, were you full? Did you overeat? Did you overconsume? What was the problem before and after? And really, kind of tracking your feelings around food. And it also tracks, you know. What did you uh, do if you went to a restaurant, et cetera, et cetera. So it kind of gives us that perspective. Now this is a non-judgmental tool. This is just to create curiosity. This isn't here to judge you and say like, oh, you overrate on your calories or anything like that. We don't care. We don't care about that. This is just a non-judgmental tool just to see where things are at and what modifications can we make moving forward. That's all it is, really. That's all we're trying to use it for. So I generally recommend to, before you kind of start on making any dietary changes, Start with that. Track your food for a couple of weeks. Be as detailed as possible. Understand where your food and calories are going to, and try to figure out where the low-hanging fruit are for you. And start making small little tweaks and changes, and then continue on from there. Cool. All right, guys. If this was any value to you, check us out.、Um, share this with your friends.、Um, like our page. Leave us a question, comment.、Uh, Instagram, Dr. Dan underscore AG. Twitter, Dr. Dan underscore AG. Uh, the health website again is healthcareevolve.ca, and our Facebook is Healthcare Evolution. All right. Anyways, guys, have a good one. We'll talk to you later.